Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer and I'm freezing <laughs> looking for my hat. <laughs> I'm gonna put on my hat. It's the ugly hat. <laughs> I'm freezing. This is the hat I made from the very first yarn I ever spun. I'm, I, I'm real close to putting on mittens. I'm freezing. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. Close that. Just so the dogs can pop it open again in two seconds. Oh man, I almost feel like I need mittens. It is a balmy 62 degrees in the house. I have turned the heater on. It was in the 80s last week. I don't know what is going on with the weather. I am, I am cold. Oh, I got my Fallout Boy hoodie on. <laughs> I'm freezing. I'm so cold. All right, so today, today's video, we're going to talk about a little shopping trip I had this weekend that I kind of talked about in Monday's video. I was popping tags and I only had $20 in my pocket. <laughs> I, I, I'm hunting, looking for a come up. This is freaking awesome. Because I went to the thrift store. I went to it actually I went to a brand new thrift store now you guys kind of heard the story happening I'm putting my hands in my pockets I'm freezing who it's even colder in my bedroom this ain't my bedroom <laughs> I could sleep in here with all the yard though but be raw honest and I I could be way way warmer I need to start piling clothes on top of myself <laughs> just, but I'm just, I'm just gonna. <laughs> oh, so yeah, it, it's colder in here because I keep the door closed all the time because I have a dog that likes to steal, and so he comes in here and he he stole, I don't know about forty rolls of washi tape and ate them because he likes the taste of the cardboard or the glue. He might like the taste of the glue. He's one of those weird dogs that like to lick stamps. <laughs> then when I took and I put the washi tape that's left, I only have like 20 rolls left. Like I have barely any at all. I put that in a drawer so he can't access it no more. He started stealing my cones of cotton because they have cardboard in them and he doesn't want the yarn. He just pulls the, he chews on it until he can get the cone out and then he eats the cone. So and the dog has stuff to chew on. He just likes the taste of the cardboard. <laughs> so we keep the door locked in here, which means there's, and I only have one heater vent, which is underneath this shelf, which means there's not real good heat circulation here. <sighs> I'm cold and tired. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those days, guys. It's, it's gonna be one of those days. Um. So anyway, this weekend we went over the mountain, over the mountain and through the wood to go visit my niece. And she wanted she she wanted to visit. I got a new little turtle up here that you guys can't see. He's from Mexico. <laughs> she brought me back from her trip. There's also one for Juju too. And then she bought Little Man Clackers and it was hilarious. If you don't know what clackers are, they are giant balls on a string with a like a keychain, and so you go click clack clack clack, and they're really loud. And the balls, dang! I mean, if you're old enough, you remember them because these this toy's been around forever. But like, they're they go clack clack clack, right? <laughs> she thought she was being slick, right? So <laughs> I really think she tries to torture me because she tortured me a lot when she was younger. She she would get up. This is my 20 year old niece. She would get up at the crack of dawn and wake the whole house up just because she just, she woke up almost screaming sometimes, just loud. She's still really loud. She's always been loud. Little man's loud. I was loud growing up. I think it might be an ADHD thing. I don't know. <laughs> she would, she tortured me a lot when she was <laughs> a little girl. And now that she's not here to be loud, I think she does stuff specifically to make sure little man is still torturing me. <laughs> and so she bought him these clackers and brought them back from Mexico. And I'm like, whatever. I had clackers growing up. I know how irritating they could be. I knew how it drove my mom crazy. And she would tell us, those are outside toys. Even though she bought them. <laughs> okay. So my niece hands them to him. He's very excited. He's in the dorm. And the dorm she lives in is it looks like a mental hospital inside there i'm gonna be raw honest it's an old building 
<laughs> it looks like a, you're inside a mental hospital and like it, and I told I was telling Juju because she likes the movie Girl Interrupted I do too and I was like it reminds me of Girl Interrupted inside her dorm and she's like oh, it does and then we were laughing <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh. So, little man is sitting in one of the common areas and he's clacking, clack, 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 walking around clacking, right? And my niece comes around the corner and she looks at me and smirks. She goes, sorry. And then two minutes later, it wasn't bother because it's not my house. <laughs> two minutes later, she's like, Lucas, can you please stop that? I looked at her, I was like, sorry, you're the one that bought them. <laughs> I was like, Lucas, keep clacking them. <laughs> you thought you were torturing me, child. I'll get you right back. <laughs> Don't play with Aunt Jenny. Don't do it. Because I got way more experience in this than you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> for about a half an hour while she's packing up boxes, he's clack, 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 and it's reverberating against the tiny little hallway she's in. It was hilarious. And then I told him, I was like, don't clack that in the car, I have a headache. And he did not. And then we got home. And I told him, those are an in-your-bedroom toy and an outside toy. So he goes up in his room, clack, 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 which I can hear, but it's up in his room. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Just go. Go in your room, close the door. Clack to your heart's cadet. <laughs> so... I don't know, there's been something with him lately that he is just so non-typical. Um, he's been extra sweet and extra loving, extra vocal in his love lovingness. Um, he made his sister cry the other day because he told her he loved her. And she had to put, she, she drove him to go get popcorn. And I, I of course, funded that trip <laughs> I was like just take my credit card go get popcorn you know and he loves he go eat popcorn every single day he loves popcorn and he just he cooks his own microwave popcorn he's happy as anything I'm like whatever you have popcorn every day if you want so he ran out and I'm I cannot stop yawning I didn't sleep last night I didn't sleep at all last night. Mr. Cinnamon was snoring like crazy. The dog kept kicking me. <laughs> um. Anyway, little man, he he's like, Juju, I, I really love you. And like that made her tear up. So she put her sunglasses on to be cool, you know. Um. There's a lot going on with him that the Cinnamon Buns know about that just is heartbreaking. And the fact that he's extra loving, it means that he's he's hurting, you know. Uh, if you don't know, he has a bully at school, and the bully has beat him up again. And um, I'm not real happy. And I'm fighting, and I'm fighting, and I'm fighting for my kid. And he sees that. Uh, we're not going to get into all that, though, today. We're not going to get into all that, because we're having fun. And we went out this weekend as a family. We went and visited her, and little man had a really good time and we did a little bit of shopping but like we're we, we don't have a whole lot of money right now because I'm putting my money towards the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival and like a bill came up with Mr. Cinnamon so like money is real tight and I, this is just real talk between you know just between us friends <laughs> we're not we're not in danger we're just we're really being careful right and so we decided we were going to go hit up a couple of shops, but like I said at the beginning of the video, I got $20 in my pocket, and that's it. <laughs> so, this shopping spree cost all of, actually it was like $19 and some change at the end of the day. And I could not be happier. Could not be happier. So the first place we went to, I think it's called Liberty Street Mercantile, which is in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And in the basement of that little tiny is a really cool, like, industrial building. It's next to the chicken plant, which it smells god-awful down there. <laughs> like, she said, it's, she said it's the chicken plant, but it smells like chicken feed, not chicken. Unless they're using leftover chicken parts to make dog food. Because that's kind of what it smelled like, was a mix of Pringles and dog food. It was really strong, like, thick in the air. <laughs> It was just, 
is next to the chicken plant. Whatever the chicken plant is, whatever they do in the chicken plant, I don't know if it smelled like Pringles and dog food, okay? And I know they use a lot of like leftover chicken parts for, for dog food specifically. I don't know what else they use chicken parts for. And like I said, they very well could have been making chicken feed. I don't know what they do with the chicken. Actually, I don't know what they're doing at the chicken plant because it says on the side of the building, eggs, poultry, etc., etc. So maybe they're processing chickens. But why it smells like Pringles and dog food, I have no idea. But it was gross. <laughs> it was gross. It smelled bad out there. And... um so we, I wanted to go visit Rocktown Yarns just to go in there and, and peruse. Now I'm going to tell you, Rocktown Yarns, um, she's having a lot of difficulties. She has health issues, and she's posted about it on her Instagram, and she's also having business problems, which is real evident when you walk into the store. Like, she has, she doesn't have as much yarn as I have on one bookshelf in her entire shop. And... We went in the, um, right before Christmas, we went there and Mr. Cinnamon actually bought me some of this from her, which is Malabrigo Caracol, which is like gorgeous. My favorite yarn. <laughs> it's so pretty. And he also bought me some Kim's Dyes yarn, but like we went in there and they have more makes in there. So you could buy a bunch of, they had like, I don't know, 30 crocheted amigurumi pop tarts and they had some wall mosaic crochet things and there was there was more things that were made for sale that you know they're trying to bring in people that are not just crafters into the shop which i think is brilliant but the yarn selection is so so minimal it's actually sad to go in there and they'll have one of those one of those. <laughs> Two of these. Like, there, there's not... There's not a lot going on in their shop. And there's not enough that you can go in there and say, I want to make a sweater and buy a sweater's, sweater's quantity of anything in her shop. It's like bare bones yarn. And she's trying to reach out and make it a... Um, a co-op and she was having people buy in so that they could come in and you know sell what they want to sell or arrange for classes and stuff like that and I don't know I want to support her but at the same time I don't foresee the store lasting that long in the position it, or the situation it's in right now I just don't see it unless a miracle occurs um, it's a cool location. It's a really cool location. And I could see so much potential in there. But bare bones. Bare minimum of anything. Like it's real empty in there. <laughs> and it's worse than it was in December. So it looks like they haven't restocked or stocked anything new when we went in. Except like the Pop-Tarts. I didn't see the Pop-Tarts last time. And so I was really disappointed by that. I didn't have money to buy anything. But I just wanted to go look. And I, you know... I, I was like, okay, maybe I can buy myself one thing. Well, I did buy myself something. Got the Rocktown yarn bag. I bought fluff. I bought fluff because it was a really good price. Um, I bought two of them. Your support is such a treat. You just supported local, and we can't thank you enough. Your purchases help support Rocktown Yarn's mission to build a strong, inclusive community around fiber arts and encourage those who are new to yarn crafts to explore and learn. We hope you love your purchase, but if you don't, just let us know. We'll do our best to make it right. Come back and see us. They are located on 76 West Gay Street in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Rocktownyarn.com and Rocktown Yarn on Facebook. TikTok, I think that's TikTok, and um, the Instagram. So they had on a table, and Mr. Cinnamon actually spotted them. He's all, they have spindles. My spindle is a little on the small side for me because this spins, okay, this is about 100 grams, and it just didn't want to hold all 100 grams of this. 
Isn't that pretty? I showed this to you on the the Swift, but I didn't show it to you hanged up. I spun this and plied it. It's two yarns plied together. This 100, it's about 100 grams, didn't want to fit on my spindle. And so the spindles they actually had are smaller than this. And I told Mr. Sim, I was like, it's a really cool spindle. It was only $9, but um, they're smaller than what I have. And actually, if I want, if I'm going to buy another spindle, I'm going to buy a bigger one with a bigger um, whirl because I'm spinning more than this can handle. <laughs> this is a good starter spindle, but I think I need something a little bit bigger. I'll just put that right there. And... Um, she had these beautiful little balls just sitting on she had three of them two were the rambouillet these are four ounce top these were ten dollars which is a good price it says four ounce top rambouillet i'm going to attempt to dye these i'm scared to try to dye them because that this is one so they were two, they were $10 each, which means they were $20 for the two of them. And I apparently, well, Mr. Cinnamon <laughs> had a reward with them because he bought me Christmas presents from them at Christmas time. Isn't that pretty? It's like a little, a little white cloud. He had, he, he apparently spent a pretty penny because he had rewards with them. And so these two are sitting on the table and there was a third one, but it was cotton and I don't like working with cotton. Cotton, first of all, cotton is harder. You have to use different, you can't use the acid dyes you use for this on cotton. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to mess around. I don't want to buy RIT dye. I have RIT dye. I don't like RIT dye. RIT dye is really hard to work with. It just does not, like, it's so ultra concentrated you have to keep washing and keep washing. And if you're going to die, that I'm going to die this in a video tomorrow probably and hope that it turns out. Um, but if you use RIT dye on something like this, it, well, the cotton isn't going to felt as easily, but I didn't want to die. So I was like, the cotton can stay on the table, even though it was homegrown Virginia cotton, which made me want to buy it because it's super uber lo local. I was like, I'm not going to mess with no cotton. I don't like dyeing cotton. Cotton bleeds when you dye it. Like, not going to happen. And I don't like spinning cotton. It's harder to spin. <laughs> now, with that, they had the two. They only had two of these. $10 each. $20. Cool. Like, we got $20. Like, it's awesome, right? So I put him up there. And she's all, you have rewards. You want to use it? And then he's all, yeah. And then it wouldn't go through. And then he scanned his card. And then they're like, do you want to use your rewards? And he's all, yeah. And we didn't know. It's $5 off. So these two were $15. Yeah. So to buy these already dyed would be $25 each on average. I think that's what I paid at the, the yarn show. So... $15 for two, I can dye them myself. And then I can spin them into really beautiful yarn. I can ply them together if I want. They're both four ounce top rambouillet. They're super like cloud soft. Now I'm scared because dyeing top like that, you have a really good chance to felt it. But I've been watching videos and actually I've been watching videos on how to dye these from Chemnitz for years and years. And I watch how she does it and I watch all the things because she's scared to felt her own yarn like she always says that like i'm trying not to felt this so i'm trying to do this and not this and this and not that and so i know i don't want to shock it by going hot to cold or cold to hot and i don't want to wash it and like i'm gonna dye it and you can wash it rinse out the extra dye but you can't like give it a good wash like you can with yarn because it will felt and then you got to be careful in the drying process like there's all these things you got to be careful with when you're dying um the fluff like that but i think it's going to be worth the effort to try to do it i think it'll be fun it'll be a fun video at the very least and um i think that will probably be a tomorrow video if i can get everything else done today that needs to be done also it's freezing outside so <laughs> it's not it's supposed to be 65 today but i'm cold like my hands are freezing <laughs> freezing all right, so after we went there, there was a bunch of other shops in there too. We went through. They have a bookshop. 
Well, I don't want to say there's a bunch. There's a, a handful of little vendors in there. There's a a coffee shop in there. There's a bookshop. There's a little home goods sh shop that just has weird, random, like cute, like unusual things. Like they have soap. They have chocolate. They have like salt and pepper shakers. I bought Mr. Cinnamon a stopwatch. A really nice stopwatch with a really nice phrase in it for Christmas from this little shop. So there's like little cute little boutiques in there. There's a children's clothing boutique in there. And I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> they have jams and jellies too. And then they had a little booth. And by little booth there was like someone in there with a bookshelf filled with stuff that they were selling. Um, dog. There was dog stuff in there too. Like dog bow ties and dog treats and stuff like that. But it was literally like two bookshelves. So after we went to Liberty Street Mercantile, which is just a fancy name, we went to, um, we wanted to go over to Valley Creative Reuse, but they, we missed them. They closed nine minutes before we got there. So on the way to Valley Creative Reuse, which I've shown in other videos, there was a thrift store that we, I never knew was there as right up the road. And the girls both go, oh, they, and they were so excited because there's a big sign on the, the, outside of the building that says books a dollar and under a dollar or less and they like books and I'm like all right well I mean let's go in there we got nothing else to do and I only spent 15 of my 20 dollars <laughs> so I was fin to go let's do this and so the first thing I, I my mind is like okay let's see if I can find some craft books since they're a dollar and under like let's see if we can find some craft books that I don't have and then we'll see if they have any yarn we'll see if they have any anything special any knickknacks or bric-a-brac or anything like <laughs> that I just have to have and bring home and little man found a remote control for uh, Amazon fire stick for his TV I don't know why he likes weird stuff like that he has a collection of old GPS's yeah he'll find them for like two three dollars at the thrift store and he buys them with his allowance and he comes home and he plays with GPS's like the GPS you put in your car. Yeah, he has like three or four. <laughs> He's weird. <laughs> He's perfectly wonderfully weird. He has weird quirks and I love him for it. He also has a collection of old camera and video equipment. Thanks to someone special, she knows who she is. Um, <laughs> and he likes to film and video himself making videos. He edits them. He does all kinds of weird stuff. He puts them into video games that he's designing himself he's nine years old i will remind you um he's a little baby genius he likes anything like unusual like that i have a collection of old cameras because i was a photographer in my past life and by past life i mean <laughs> a couple years ago <laughs> that was about 10 years ago i had my own photography business and it was pretty successful I, I really it was good so I have a collection of old cameras that are not functional but I bought them because I was like I'm a photographer I have all these cool old cameras they're all antiques at this point <laughs> he likes taking them apart and seeing how they work which is fine with me and um well he collect he collects just weird brand like he will get like a little niche and be like I want five of these and like two of the like he if he finds out the thrift store's technology he wanted me to buy him an old cricket machine that had the cartridges i was like not nah, nope <laughs> that can't happen <laughs> no sir no sir that has long been discontinued technology it is non-functioning we are not buying an old cricket and so i let him play with my cricket he created a sticker and he was happy and so there may be stickers from him <laughs> <laughs> in the near future where he creates his own designs I have no doubt that he will do that um he just likes he likes seeing how things work and he likes all of that he's just a funny kind of kid so that was his one treasure I don't know how much they charged him for it because I got all of this and his remote control for under four dollars or no, just over $4. It was $4 and some change, okay? No idea how much anything cost. I don't like that they put packing tape on this yarn, and I just realized they put packing tape on this yarn. Do they not know? That's going to ruin the yarn. This is one of those weird, funky yarns that I... And I'm taking this tag out. It says this yarn was 50 cents. 
This yarn was not in with the craft supplies. It was over by the bric a brac. Yeah, and I'm cutting the yarn trying to get the tape up. What? People are stupid. Don't that just make you sick to your stomach? All right, it's not too bad. The reason I bought this yarn is because I found some of this at the Creative Reuse in Richmond called Scrap RVA, which they are getting ready to open in a new location, a bigger location. I cannot wait. That store is tiny. Um, I had some of this in a different color. I don't know where my... I made a caterpillar and this was the yarn I used but in a different color and he looks cool. I don't know where he's at. I know that I took a bunch of my amigurumi out. He might be in that bucket. I have a bucket outside the door that's been sitting there because it's got extra stuff. Anyway, yeah that ruined it a little bit but I mean it's funky anyway so this makes really cool amigurumi. I surface crochet with this so I will crochet the the amigurumi I don't have an amigurumi close by either okay we'll pretend this is an amigurumi I didn't make this either it's a coaster okay so you make the amigurumi okay we'll pretend this is an octopus okay you make the octopus and then you crochet on the surface with this stuff that way you can see what you're doing because you're working into regular yarn, but then you still have the outside of your yarn looks like this. It's a really fun technique to do. I think I did a video on it. I'm not positive, but this is some funky cool yarn. And it makes a really cool like effect on top of something when you um, surface crochet with it. It's a lot of fun. There are a bunch of ends. There we go. See, that one even attached. Although, I may have accidentally cut that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So, yeah. 50 cents for that. And then, I bought this to entertain the kids while we're driving. <laughs> and I irritated them so bad. It's knock-knock jokes. Now, the knock-knock jokes in here are ridiculously corny. Knock-knock. Who's there? Cinnamon Stitches. Meg. Meg who? Make up your mind. Are you going to let me in or aren't you? <laughs> uh, knock knock. Who's there? Making. Making who? You're making me mad with all this knocking I'm having to do. <laughs> it's so stupid. Knock knock. Who's there? Luca. Luca who? Look up through the keyhole and you'll see who it is. <laughs> so I bought that for just to irritate the kids in the car. <laughs> I got in the car. I was like, look what I got. And they were like, oh God, here she goes. <laughs> and so I was like, knock, knock. And I didn't get a response. Knock, knock. No response. Knock, knock. Nothing. I said, knock, knock. And then the three of them, who's there? <laughs> don't mess with me you better say who's there I'm going to keep knocking <laughs> then they had this which has a bunch of clearance stickers on it five dollars two sixty it was nowhere near that I think this was probably 25 cents and it's got four poncho designs these are three of them which this style a lot of these styles don't fit me because they're designed with a smaller body in mind so they come down sooner than they should like I needed to go out and then come down or like just go out but this one is my favorite and I kind of want to make this I just think this is gorgeous but my problem is that I cannot work all in one color like my brain just won't let me my brain gets so bored and I'm like I cannot but it's beautiful and I want to make it. And I already know how to make this. It's a giant square. You just literally start in the middle. And I already know how to make it. But I, I still. I still bought. And this is with the waffle stitch. At least that's what it says in the pattern. Looks like the waffle stitch to me. But. 
I thought that was really pretty. And I'm thinking that it's beautiful. It's beautiful in that cream color, but like I'm thinking like gray. I'm more of a gray girl because I get everything white dirty. So there was that. And and if you've ever been to the thrift store, you know that crochet books are really hard to come by. Like you'll see 8,000 knit books, but like crochet is really hard to come by. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if there's not as many crochet books or if us crocheters just keep our books forever. I don't know. <laughs> but it's really hard to find crochet books. But this, this place had, we had a few going on. Um, now this one was either kept where they have mice or something and the reason I know that is because the edge of the magazine has little teeth marks that is a mouse was chewing on this and the reason I know that is because if you open up to some of the pages you can see where the mouse was going I don't know if you can see that but see there's little chomps kind of gross but I mean whatever It is what it is, folks. It's a thrift store. And what was weird is they had a whole room of just books at this thrift store. And like a whole room. And there was no craft books. I'm like, what? Why do they not have any craft books? And Mr. Cinnamon was on the other side of the store with a little man. And he met me in the book room. And he's all, what you're looking for is straight back to the left. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what am I looking for? He's all, just go. He already knew. He already knew. They had a whole section with just the yarn that... Where did I put it? They had... This was like the best yarn that they had. And it wasn't even in with the other yarn. It was very much like scraps. And like those packets of like latch hook um, yarns. It was very like... They had a bunch of fabric scraps. But I really don't need any more fabric. And they had like boxes with books in them that you could pull out so i was very happy so this is crochet world from spring 2018 it says 45 plus projects for everyone on your list and what i like about crochet world is they put pictures in the back of all the projects that are in this book so we're gonna slow pan so you guys can get a good look this blanket is so cute i like the baby stuff We're panning. This hat's cute. We're panning. This beret is cute. And then this page. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this and still see what you guys are seeing. Peekaboo. So, yeah, I was looking through this. I was looking through all these books last night. And I was like making a mental list. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. And this made me really excited because I made a blanket almost identical to that. I think it was last year or the year before. And I lost the pattern. And I don't know what I did with the pattern. And it was a paper pattern. But it was a small booklet. I have no idea where I put it. And I really liked making the blanket like that. And so I saw it in there. I was like, oh. That's almost a pattern. So, now I have it again. Provided I don't lose it or forget what book it's in. Because <laughs> we know that's how I do. I forget and I'm like, where is it at? And then they have this. Better Homes and Gardens 123 Crochet. This is from, let's see if we can find a print date. Without my glasses on, this ought to be interesting. I don't see a print date. It's usually on the first page. I see nothing. Oh, it's on the back page. Two thousand and five. This is printed in two thousand and five. So the year Juju was born. It's eighteen years old. And it's got really cute, like, it's got cute stuff in here. I was, like, skimming through homespun welcome mat, which I think would be a cute blanket. Oh, hi. 
Hi. Hello. I love you too. Where were you? Hi, Scarlett. Benjamin. Oh, and Oreo. I know I love you too. Oreo. Alright, I gave everybody pets. Go. Go find Juju. Go. Hi, Oreo. You need extra. My old lady, you need extra butt robins? Go find Juju. Roo, roo, roo. Juju, call Oreo. Oreo, you want a bite? Go get a bite. <laughs> Cute little baby sweater. So, I feel like I made out for 20 bucks and the day with my family. I feel like we did really good. Y'all. Cute little granny poncho. It's so funny how things come back around repeatedly. <laughs> I kind of love this. Okay. I've seen this on Jada and Stitches where she did like the cute little stuff for her pockets. But I have a pair of capri pants upstairs that are supposed to be folded up but they never stay folded up so i'm like okay but how cute is that and then i can just tack them up so you can always see the crochet and i'm thinking like rainbow crochet on the bottom of my pants right i kind of need to do that and i also have a pair of i have a pair of shorts that i bought and they have like the holes the faded look in them but one of the holes is way up here by the pocket and that's a little close to the underwear line if you get what i'm saying so I want to like fill that in. I'm always uncomfortable when I wear those shorts. Um, I didn't realize the hole was up so high when I purchased them. But I want to fill that in with crochet because I thought it would be really cool. And this is like the binding isn't, isn't the binding isn't even broken. And then, y'all, I found Disney crochet. You you already know if you know anything about me. There's always like stitches up there <laughs> stitch and figment are on my desk actually i have a whole bunch of little metal figurines too so i have animal i have lilo i have scrooge mcduck kermit the frog i have um uh, gizmo <laughs> i have uh gizmos from ducktales i have I, I mean, I have all kinds. There's Disney all the way around me. I have Disney art behind you. Like, there's Disney ears are back. Like, Disney is life, okay? Disney is life. <laughs> so, when I saw Disney, I was like, oh, we're getting it. We're getting it. Now, there's not anything extraordinarily Disney in here. But these are just baby Afghans that are part of the Pooh collection. And I really like this blanket. I think it's really pretty. I also like this one, but this one's motifs, and I am not crocheting nothing and sewing that together. But let me show you this other blanket that's in here. There's some really, really pretty blankets in here. This one. So it's got baubles, but the baubles look like flowers. Because they do the chevron in yellow. And then they do green, and in the green chevron they put little pink puffs. So it looks like a little, it looks like flowers. That is just so pretty. This one's real pretty. So, yeah. And there's, does it say how many are in here? There's quite a few blankets in here. I know it had a list of the blankets somewhere. All right, here we go. Back page. There's nine blankets in this pattern book. And then last but not least, I got this. This says it was at Book Fair for $4.99. The ISBN price was $22.99 US, $27.99 Canada. And it's Mason Dis Dixon Knitting, which I didn't know is actually people. I just, I thought the cover looked really interesting. <laughs> so these are actual people. They're designers. They have like... It's Kay Garden, Garden, Gardener and Anne Shane, the founders of MasonDixonKnitting.com. And it says, The Curious Knitter's Guide, stories, patterns, advice, opinions, questions, answers, jokes, and pictures created for knitters everywhere who share the give em hell spirit of just picking up the needles and making stuff. 
And I feel like that's kind of got to be me because I hate following patterns. I mean, even with my crochet, I, I don't. And when I made the shawl, this shawl with absolutely no pattern and no idea what I was doing, <laughs> and it turned out so beautiful, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to take the same approach with knitting that I take with crochet and just do it. <laughs> And if I mess it up, I mess it up. If it turns out beautiful like that did, like I won, I succeeded, and we're just going to have to take that approach. So when I saw this book, I was like, okay, uh, first of all, the bind is not broken at all, which means nobody has cracked into this thing. I did yesterday, but I didn't crack the binding. I just was like perusing through. And um, the first thing I saw is that it starts off at the beginning of the book. I mean, there's, there's advice in here. There's I, I need to read through it. There's this beautiful washcloth that I kind of want to make. And it's very similar to um, wherever I put that knit pattern I got from the, the yarn shop. Do you guys remember? I got to change my battery. Hang on. All right, I'm back. I got to find the page I was on. All right, so the technique of this is very similar to a pattern that I got from Knitting Bee when I went to visit them during the yarn crawl. And so I was like, okay, well, that's that's a really good way to start is with that. And it says, in defense of the wash rag, the wash rag, <laughs> the wash rag, because that's how they say it in the South. Disruptions are a way of life around here anymore. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm saying. It's like several minutes later. I know I was talking about a wash rag. But anyway, they have some really cool stuff in here. Um, and they do have... They do have knit patterns for... They start you off with a hand towel. Then they move you on to... I don't know what this is. <laughs> it's a dragon for a jean jacket. And... It goes up from there. A cushion cover. So, they talk about all kinds of stuff in here. I just thought it was an interesting book. I probably won't make half the stuff in here. But also, like, it's always good to learn. You know, as time goes on, to keep yourself pushing and learning more. And so that's why I got this book. And I thought it was an interesting read. And lately, it seems like if I'm reading it, I'm reading it in crochet books. <laughs> and there are, it says there's jokes in here, but I ain't seen one yet. Unless, I just ain't read into it enough. But, um, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, 20 bucks. 20 bucks! 20 bucks a day of shopping with my family came home with beautiful things entertaining things um put those back in that bag although they're not gonna stay in this bag because you see what's happening one of you can see like the wool is coming off on the bag because the bag has jagged edges so i'm actually probably gonna go try to dye that today and film it if i can um i'm not gonna film the whole process start to finish but i wanted to show you guys what i was doing because I don't know I just thought it'd be fun to be out on the the patio again be in the backyard on the deck and I already got all of my dye stuff out so um I already know what colors I want to dye that I already know and it's colors I don't readily have and I think I'm gonna dye them both at the same time the same colors but I'm gonna dye them I think I want to dye them so that I can spin them the opposite direction and then I could twist them together so that like the colors run you know what I'm saying so it looks kind of like something along this line I think that's what I want to do because I was terrified of plying yarn which is just the act of you spin one yarn you spin another yarn and then you spin them together in the opposite direction I was really scared of plying I was like that sounds scary it looks terrible it's so easy and so much fun 
and plying 100 grams of yarn takes me all of 15 minutes on a drop spindle. <laughs> it's so quick and easy. It's why was I scared of it? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. But like the whole spinning thing I take in really easily to like really quickly to which is like crazy to me but um it just came really easy to me and I was so scared of it I was so scared of it because I was afraid of knitting and knitting came really hard to me so now every time I start something new I'm like okay is this going to be as hard as knitting was everything gets compared to that is this going to be as hard as knitting was for me to understand and the answer is no not everything is as hard as knitting was for me and now I can design with knitting which is re uh, evident by the shawl like I clearly understand it now but it still is very, um, knitting is intimidating to me. It just is. Because it's not something I'm, I grew up with. I grew up with crochet. I am familiar with yarn and the way it should feel because I work with it all the time. And so spinning comes a little bit easy to me because I think I've had so much yarn pass through my fingers. I don't know. I don't know why spinning comes so easy to me. Because I've had people tell me that they really struggle with it. It's really hard for them. And I totally understand that too. Um, but to me it's like, it, it's just so second nature to me. As if like in a past life I was a, <laughs> I was a yarn spinner. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. And I will see you tomorrow hopefully for dyeing that roving. Um, it's not going to be a full start to finish video. But it might be. If I can get it to dry. If I get it to dry in time, I will show you the final product in that video as well. But because it's so cold, and especially in my house, and I can't leave it outside. I can't leave it outside to dry because um, even though I have the heater on, it's still cold in here. I can't leave it outside to dry because the trees are dropping pollen everywhere. And they're dropping little bits of plant life everywhere. So I don't want anything to get into that yarn. So it can't even be set outside to dry like I normally do. So I'm going to have to bring it in and set it somewhere. Find the hottest part in the house, which is probably upstairs in my bathroom. Which works. But I will try. <laughs> if I can get it to dry properly, I will show you the final product as well. And um, we're just going to play that by ear. Although I have, I'm filming this on Monday. And I have all the way till Friday to get it to dry. So it should be dry by then. Um, for me to film the end of the video. I think, I think, yeah. We'll Quit thinking out loud and end the video. <laughs> I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys.